Hey friends, it's Matt with Bowls, and today we are taking a look at the latest Dune game from Gale Force 9. Now, there are several Dune board games out there now, and we are taking a look at the 2021 version, which coincides with the release of the new movie. This version uses a lot of the same mechanics as the 2019 version of the game, so if you'd like to see our how to play video on that, you can click the card up in the corner. But this version modernizes a lot of the mechanics and streamlines it for a more contemporary gaming environment. So, with all that in mind, let's take a look at the new 2021 Dune board game. Dune is a competitive area control combat game with resource management and some economic mechanics. Each player controls a different faction with unique abilities and strategies. The game plays out over five rounds, and the objective of each player is to be the first to control three strongholds within that limit after the third round. If, by the end of the fifth round, no player has done so, players score points based on the number of strongholds they do control and for each spice they hold, and whichever player has the most points wins. During setup, each player gets a certain number of combat forces ready and a certain number of spice, which is used as currency throughout the game. But also during setup, each player draws four trader cards, choosing one to keep. Trader cards will be used during battle, which we'll get into later. Each round of gameplay begins with the storm phase. The storm die is rolled and the storm token moves that many sectors over the map. Any combat forces or spice tokens in sand region that the storm passes over are destroyed and moved from the board. Spice tokens are sent to the spice bank, and combat forces are sent to the Tlilaxu tanks to be revived later. Next, in the spice blow phase, the top card of the spice blow deck is revealed, and the two regions shown on the card are populated by spice tokens, and any forces in that region are destroyed. Unless, of course, a sandworm card is revealed. In this case, all forces and spice in that region are destroyed, and a new card is revealed until another spice blow card is shown, which functions as normal. So spice blow is about as dangerous as the storm phase. It's just a devastating way to start each round. In the next phase, players can gain new cards. Each player can draw up to their maximum hand size of battle cards. These cards are used during combat to aid their attack or defend their leaders. But also during this phase, players can purchase market cards for two spice each, pay to the bank. These cards do a more wide array of different things, like control the storm, peek at your opponent's cards, gain extra movement, or counter a faction ability, and tons of other effects. After that, players get to revive some of their combat forces from the Tlalaxu tanks. Each faction can revive two forces for free, but can pay extra to revive more if they so choose. These revived units are placed on the player's faction board until they can be properly shipped to the planet, which is the next phase. Each player may pay one spice per force to ship them from their player board onto any region on the map board, except those regions within the storm. After that, each player can move any number of forces from one region to any other region within three spaces away. Finally, once each player is done moving their forces, any region with more than one faction's forces present engage in battle. When two players engage in combat, they must first develop their battle plan. They each take a battle wheel and set it to any number from zero to the number of forces they have in the combat region. This is the number of forces they are choosing to commit to that battle. Then they choose a leader token to slot into the wheel. This leader will add their strength to the overall battle plan. Finally, each player can choose to add a weapon card, a defense card, or both or neither. Once each player's battle plan is set, the battle wheels are revealed simultaneously. Then the battle cards are resolved and the player with the highest total is declared the winner. The winning side loses as many forces as they committed to the combat, and the losing side loses all of their forces in the region. <coughs> However, you may remember that during setup, each player drew some traitor cards, and this is where they come into play. If you are in combat and your opponent reveals a leader whose traitor card you hold, you can reveal the traitor card to automatically win the battle. You lose no forces, collect bonus spice, 
and get to send that traitorous leader to the Talaxu tanks. Ultimately, a huge swing in power for the winning side. Once all combats are resolved, any spice on the board in occupied regions is collected by whatever factions are present there. Then, players check to see if anyone has won the game, and if not, the next round begins. Like I said before, if you played the previous versions of Dune, a lot of that will probably look pretty familiar. But this version cuts out a lot of the extraneous mechanics and streamlines the gameplay a lot. I'd like to focus on another element that this version adds, which is a two-player head-to-head mode. In a two-player mode, players roll at the start of the game to cover certain strongholds. They will remain unusable throughout the game. Also, players have the option of using the allied faction boards, which blend the faction abilities of two separate factions together, providing a little bit of bonus from each. And that's Dune, a game of conquest and diplomacy. If you're interested in checking out the game which inspired this one, check out our video on that, or click this playlist down here for our other board game videos. Again, I'm Matt with Bowls. Thanks for watching. Bye.